friends, this is Aroma here, and welcome back to Change Lane. Today we are here, um, waking up from whatever the fuck just happened to us. <laughs> Milo sighed and rubbed his forehead. No, the creature was a literal secret. A what? <laughs> the concept is difficult to explain, so you may think of it as a small piece of someone's soul that held a bit of information, a secret of theirs. What? Why is their secret looking so devious like that, and why did it attack me? When such things become separated from their original owner, I don't know why I said that weird, they can take on a life of their own to, to some degree. We typically refer to things like that as a ori, 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 ori collectively, but that one specifically was a secret. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Occasionally, Aurea or Ori became lost and unable to find their way back to their original owner. When they absorb negative energy, they can be dangerous, as that one was. Oh, I thought it was a cat. Perhaps it would be better if you do less thinking and more asking. I glared at him. He didn't have to be rude about it. I mean, he was right. But jeez, I was so new to this. You may return to class, but you'll have a slight lingering headache. Try to avoid sudden movements for a while. Fine. It's not like I wanted to stay with Mr. Grumpy Butt anyway. I stood carefully and headed for the door. He was right about the headache. The cheek of Melody? I stopped and looked at him when an eyebrow raised questioningly. Your curiosity is admirable, but if you continue to confront things you know nothing about, you may end up seriously injured. Well, this time I brought William, okay? The last time, I, I said fuck it and ignored it. The second time, I was like, you know what, Let, let's go check it out, okay? There won't always be someone around to intervene. There are people who have more experience with these things, and people whose responsibility is it, responsibility it is to deal with them. From now on, it would be wise to ask their help and not drag others into troublesome situations with your impulsive behavior, especially at this time of year. Oh, right. Thank you for clearly stating that I'm useless. Appreciate it. I'll remember that. Milo's held out two slips of paper and took them hesitantly. One will excuse you from the class you missed earlier. Don't forget to stop by and give it to the teacher before the day is out. The other will excuse your tardiness for the current block. Thanks. And Miss Melody Corvin wished me to relay a message. He said he will have to take a ring check on your date this afternoon. <laughs> Did he really tell Vilas we had a date? Thanks. <laughs> Embarrassing. I stalked out of the room and back towards the stairs. My head hurt, and I was frustrated, mostly at myself. I did get it. I needed a lesson in listening. The others had already told me to avoid any more confrontations and I had ignored them. Technically, I did. Technically, I did choose to ignore, but I know that won't be interesting content for you guys. You're probably going to be real curious about what that thing was. But Vilas didn't have to be so cranky about it. No one got hurt. Really? Probably? Ugh. I should probably apologize to William and Vilas. Man, I suck. It was impossible to focus for the rest of the afternoon. I'd already missed art, which was my favorite subject. History was half over, and I spent most of it with my head down regretting my decisions. I was glad the rest of my afternoon had a light course flow that didn't require much focus. It left me with ample time to mentally kick myself and wish for a hole to crawl in while I wallowed in yet another embarrassing incident. After school was over, I found, my, found a note in my locker. When I unfolded it, I was as surprised as to see the familiar writing. It was from Corvin. Hey, sorry, but it looks like I had to cancel our date. A little problem popped up, and it's the kind that's my specialty. So I have to handle it. But don't worry, I will definitely make it up to you. Maybe I can take you to my family's cafe next week. Well, it's kind of a coffee shop and cafe. But yeah, I'll take you on Tuesday, okay? Let me know if you want to go. See ya, Cor. I frowned as I mulled over what he wrote. The last time he wrote Corvin, right? And now he wrote Cor. Right? What did he mention by taking care of that? Uh, taking care of that thing William and I saw? I would have thought Vilos handled that. Did that mean the cat thing I, ha I saw had something to do with Corbin's exorcisms? Were those things possessing people? Ugh, I felt so out of the loop and behind on everything. I sighed and slammed my locker door, resting my forehead against the cold metal. I was so over October already. Chapter 3, this is Solace Court. Oh no. 
I was having a strange dream. And the dream was sitting in my bedroom, but everything was strange. Like I was looking at the world through the wrong eye, uh, wrong eye, wrong end of a dusty telescope. I watched myself leave the room and steal quietly down the dark hole. I could feel the carpet. I could hear the ticking of the downstairs clock. But my legs wouldn't listen to me when I told them to stop. As if I was just a passenger in a body someone else controlled. I was muttering in a strange, raspy voice. A voice that was mine, but didn't sound like me. It wasn't until I reached the bottom of the stairs in the kitchen that I jolted fully awake. I was standing barefoot at the bottom of the stairs, shivering in the cool and staring at the light above the stove. Anxiety settled in the pit of my stomach as my mind caught up with the situation. Sleepwalking. Why am I doing this again? I've been able to wa walk, wake up before getting outside, but I was pretty sure that's where I had been headed. The sound of a creaky floorboard upstairs made me pad to the sink to get a glass of water. It had to be Spencer. He was the only other bedroom upstairs. Mom and Dad were downstairs at the other end of the house. If he came down, it would be the second time he caught me roaming around the house at night, and I didn't want to deal with him interrogating me over it again. I kept a watch on the door as I sipped the water, but he never materialized, so I set the glass down and went back to my room. For the rest of the night, I stayed huddled in my bed, afraid to fall asleep again. It was the third time I was doing this since we moved back. Once might have been a fluke, twice could be written off as a stress or something. Three times was definitely an issue, and it was one I wasn't sure how to deal with on my own. Morning was painfully slow to arrive. I had dozed off at some point in spite of myself and woke up to the sound of mom telling me I was going to be late. Somehow I managed to crawl out of bed. Drag I dragged through getting ready and stumbled downstairs for coffee, still half asleep. No one was in the kitchen, so I immediately poured myself coffee and ignored the plate of egg toast on the table. I took one swallow and set the mug on the counter, leaning my head against the cool cabinet door. As I stared blankly in front of me, the brownie toddled downstairs, dragging something with it. I heard the familiar clinking together of keys. What's it doing now? Must be hiding keys again. It was so angry at Spencer for whatever reason. At least it was just the keys this time, unless it already finished hiding his homework or dropping his toothbrush in the toilet like it had the other day. I may have laughed at that one. Of course, Spencer blamed me, though. I closed my eyes and let out a long sigh. Maybe I should go stop it. It's amazing how you can sleep standing up. I jolted awake and stared at Spencer blearily. Rough night. Yeah, I guess so. Seen the keys this morning. No. Wait, why do I feel like maybe I did see them somewhere? What the fuck? What's going on with the girl? They're not where I left them or in any of the usual spots. I picked up my coffee and took a sip, making a face when I realized it was cold. Why is he bothering me about this again? I don't know where his stupid keys are. You seem to be getting more and more creative where you're leaving them. Or you're getting more creative where you're hiding them. I glared at him. It was the same thing every morning lately. I was already tired of this conversation. It wasn't like I could tell him that our household spirit was hiding them, so I just bit on an equally stupid accusation. I have another thought. Maybe you're losing them on purpose because you have nothing else to accuse me of. I don't have a reason to pull something like that. Neither do I. I slammed the coffee mug down on the counter, ignoring the coffee that sloshed over my hand. Spencer took a step back, eyes wide. I sighed and rubbed up my head. I'm so not in the mood for this. Michiko, honey, what's going on? Why are you shouting? Nothing. I'm leaving. I stormed outside just as Allie drove up. Stalking to her car, I yanked the door open and flopped down without a word. Well, you look... I glared at her. I was going to say tired. <laughs> Sorry. Rough night. Just ignore me. I'm not in a great mood. Everything okay? No, no it wasn't. I was trying to sleepwalk my way into hypothermia or another 10 day disappearance and my brother kept accusing me of stealing his damn car keys because a stupid gross little fairy is- hey, excuse me, the fairy's not gross, it's actually cute- that lived in our house was bullying him. It was it okay? Nothing was okay. I didn't know what to tell her. She had enough on her plate with her internship at that paranormal agency without my dumping prob- without my dumping my problems on her as well. Chico? It's nothing. Sorry, I just had a weird dream and didn't sleep well, that's all. I couldn't bother her with it yet, not until I knew more about what was happening. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm yawning. I opened my locker door inside. Oh, bitch. God damn it, how am I gonna not sleepwalking this route? I've been neglecting my research the past few days, but it's becoming clear that I couldn't afford to do that. There was still so much I didn't know, including things about myself. I pulled up my journal and flipped through the pages. It was too empty. I had to stop slacking off and focus on actually learning what the heck was going on with me and more than that. I needed to record all the weird things happening too. The sleepwalking, the things I was seeing. I wanted to keep a record of those all as well. I rested a hand on, my, on one page, tracing my fingers over the swirling symbols, this writing. I hadn't used it in so long. It was honestly surprising I still remembered it. 
especially since Spencer had already forgotten. Of course, the fact that he'd forgotten was what made it safe to keep my notes and research in. But even now, it made me sad to think he'd forgotten something we put so much work into. Something that happened just for the two of us. Prickles rose back of my, Prickles rose back of my neck, and right as I was about to turn around, Chico! heard the familiar voice, and there was Corbin barreling towards me at a breakneck speed. <laughs> a man just stepped out of the way at the last minute, and he slammed into my locker door instead of me. That was mean? Sorry, I sensed approaching danger and moved without thinking. I'm not dangerous, you know. Good morning. It gave me a long, serious look. You okay? Yeah, why? Nothing has happened recently? Not really, and again, I ask why. No reason, just wanted to check up on you. I'm fine, but what about you? What happened to your face this time? He reached up to touch the bruise on his jaw thoughtfully. This, I ran into a door. Their chin. <laughs> Usually it was the girl that was the clumsy one who needed protecting, but Corvin really needed someone to lock him in a tower but would wrap for his own safety. Anyway, sorry to bother you so early in the morning, but I was wondering if you wanted to have lunch with me today. I immediately thought about his huge crowd and Kara. Um... Fuck Kara. Time to steal her man. That's not his, her man. I was thinking about spending time reading. Of course I'll have lunch with you. But I don't really like crowds. There is also the Kara thing. But I didn't know how to broach it. She also seemed a bit protective of Corbin if I was reading her right. And I suspected I was. I didn't think having lunch with him would end well. But I really didn't have a problem doing it. Ali has mentioned that, but where I'm eating today won't have a huge crowd. Not a lot of people know about this particular spot, actually. Oh, where are we having lunch today? You'll find out for yourself if you say yes. I smirked at him. I could probably twist your arm and get it out of you, too. You could. He offered me his arm in a really cheeky grin. Would you like to try it now, then? What the fuck? Was, what was that creepy expression? No, no, I wouldn't. This expression is creepy? That looks like he's lusting. What kind of person looked that happy about having his arm twisted? I'll just eat lunch with you and find out that way. Aww. But that's what you originally wanted anyway. If you keep having such cute reactions, I won't be able to stop myself from teasing you. He flicked my forehead and danced away from me when I started to re retaliate. It's a date then. Did you really have to shout that? There were a few other people in the hall, all of whom looked over when he said that. Like I needed more rumors about me going around. Sure, sure, a date. He ran off and I just watched him go, wondering how it, ha how it happened that we started spending so much time together. After we parted ways, I went to literature, where we were continuing our reading of Shakespeare. It was nice how that class was something of an oasis of normalcy and a low stress, especially since my next two classes were my least favorite subjects and were shared with some of my least favorite people. By the time Trey rolled around, my sleepless nights was definitely catching up to me. I slid into my desk with a quiet sigh, not looking forward to an hour of triangle anatomy. I I lowered my head to my desk, closed my eyes, and waited for the tardy bell to signify my brain's impending doom. Mere seconds later, someone's freezing fingertips jabbed playfully into my cheek. Sleepyhead, it's still morning, you're already taking a nap. Mr. Corvin, stop poking me. Oh, I have a class with him? Is he my partner? I opened my eyes. Corvin's face was inches away from my own. He was giving me a cheeky smile. I stopped myself before he yelled at him for invading my personal space. Again. Did I wake you up? I wasn't sleeping. They mentioned a whole lot about, like, I think this is, like, mentioned a whole lot. I think this is the second, maybe third time that they mentioned his hand is really cold. You sure? Yes, I am sure I wasn't sleeping. Court, stop badgering people. I'm not badgering, I was saying hello. They're poking me? I wasn't aware you two even knew each other. Well, we are in the same club. Yep, we're club buddies. Yeah, we're club buddies. Uh-huh. Um, sure, that's totally what we are. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. No, sure, that's totally what we are. Yes, that's what we are. Club buddies? Really? Good grief. What even is that? You don't sound like you mean that. Oh no, I was being totally sincere. You sound like the opposite is sincere right now. It's your imagination. <laughs> I don't think so. Whoa, you can think? <laughs> that's mean. You're mean. You're an easy target. Besides, it's revenge for poking me. I was saying hi. You're poking me. Well, I thought you fell asleep. Uh huh. Well, now you know what happens when you wake me up. You said you weren't sleeping. I just <laughs> laughed. He was suddenly reaching for my head and then smoothing and then smoothing my hair. Whoa! Hold on. Why are you doing that? 
It's a bit messed up. Oh. I guess it's cute. <laughs> I sputtered indignantly, pushing his hand away. You two are pretty close, huh? N not really. Uh-huh. Interesting. Don't look at me like that. Your face is really red. It is? He leaned down to get a better... <laughs> He's like, wait, it is? Let me see. You lean down to get a better look. Go away, Corbett. <laughs> go away. I don't need you right now. Go away. Go away right now. But we're gonna finish the rest of this game. Well, finish the rest of the game. As in, like, not even being able to finish it. Sorry. We're only, like, on chapter 3. Anyway, I need to eat or something because I'm having a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Just focusing. So thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.